Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I want to share with you some books that I came across while I was doing some vintage thrifting this past week. I stopped at Savers and I love Savers because they have a huge section of books and the books are generally well organized so it's very easy for me to go and browse the section without feeling overwhelmed. Typically when I go to the section my first stop <laughs> is the kids section to see if they have any golden books and then the cooking book section. Cooking book section is usually where I have the most success. Well, this week I had success in both the children's section and the cooking section. So let me share with you what I found. In the children's section, I found three golden books. One is this Jingle Bells book. And I can't make out the year on it because it's kind of like cut off there for whatever reason um, but regardless of the age of the book I love the story and the illustrations and I love that it's Christmas so I definitely picked it up and it was the right price that's always key hopefully I will get around to making some Christmas themed journals this year and if that happens this is definitely going to be one of the books that I want to make a journal with. Another book I found is The Country Mouse and the City Mouse and I believe this was 19 yeah 1961 print of this book this is so super cute. And for this particular book, I was thinking a house mouse themed book. I have so many house mouse stamps that I adore but don't use as often as I should. So I thought this would be perfect for that. Then I found this 1990, if I recall correctly, print of Cinderella. They had another um, golden Cinderella golden book right next to this one, but the other one was a more up-to-date print, and I didn't care for the illustrations. But this version, it's actually 1980, not 1990. <laughs> Look at that. See, better without my glasses than with my glasses. <laughs> 1980. I love this print. I love this uh, style of illustration. This is absolutely what comes to mind when I think of Cinderella and the version that I most adore. Love this. So I will hold on to this one. Love this. And make a journal with that or some other project at some point. And then this was a fun find. It is called the Junior Classics Eight Stories from History. Now the book itself doesn't have many illustrations but the cover is gorgeous and the inside of the cover is equally as eye appealing <laughs> as the outside. This is 1959 I believe is this print 1948 it is 1948 so this is 1948, copyright 1905. It has a beautiful age to it. The pages are beautifully aged. And it has some illustrations, a couple. It's 
along those lines. But as I said, bought it less for the illustrations and more for the cover. This cover is absolutely gorgeous. Can you see that? It's embossed. It's absolutely just beautiful. I love it so, so much. And it's in pretty decent shape. The corners of the book are a little soft but that's nothing that cannot be fixed with some uh, metal book corners the spine is beautiful and it's in great shape so I was excited about that and then in the cooking section I found this better homes and gardens holiday cookbook and this book is really old but it is gorgeous this is a 1959 publication and the pages are gorgeous look at the color the aging beautiful love all of the illustrations they do have to be careful turning the pages because they rip quite easily I was a little too aggressive <laughs> earlier when I was looking through the pages and um, I'll show you like here tore a little bit can you see that right there so I find if I'm, I'm a little too aggressive in turning the pages that will happen so I have to not do that but this book is awesome because it is basically grouped into sections of special occasions and um, holidays and I absolutely love all of the holidays that are included in here you have New Year's February days which would be St. Valentine's Day you have St. Patrick's Day Easter Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Then they have anniversaries or special occasions. Foreign fair, I'm not sure um, how that's a special occasion. It's just um, different ethnic foods. Birthdays and anniversaries, coffee, tea, and punch parties, table setting tips, and of course the index. So this is really cool. Look at that setting. That is quite the setting for an anniversary buffet. Party trims, birthdays. This would be the different ethnic foods. Jack Frost dessert that has to be Christmas foreign fair okay in the foreign fair section is where they have um, like Japanese Swedish Indian Mexican Italian so pretty cool book love the age of it love the feel of it love the look of it and the cover is just about the right size if I wanted to do something in terms of a journal with it then I found, um, it's funny because after I go through the sections, you know, the kids and the cookbook section, then I just kind of start uh, browsing all of the sections generally. And um, I, is it a music section? I don't know that it's a music section or more like an educational section. I'll take a better look at it next time I'm there. But um, they had... Quite a few uh, music books and um, I, I picked this one up because it's 1956 easy classics to moderns and it's just great paper music sheets These can be uh, tea stained or coffee stained. 
to use in journals. You can use the pages themselves to create envelopes, pockets. It's just fun. It's, uh, I think music paper, music sheet um, is just a staple in anyone's <laughs> inventory of supplies um, when it comes to making journals or paper crafting generally. This is also great for creating backgrounds. So I have quite a few books similar to this, but um, I came across it. I, I love the size and the age of the book is perfect. So picked it right up. So that is my vintage thrifting share. I also wanna share with you some purchases I made from eBay. I love paper doll books and um, right now I'm even working on a super sized journal for paper doll type projects. I am always, always browsing eBay to see if any paper doll books come up at a reasonable price. I came across this listing for seven books and the seven books were listed for, um, I think he had it for like $14.99 or best offer. I made an offer, not $14.99 <laughs> and uh, didn't think he would accept it. Um, it was just, oh, let's see if he says no, it's no, but he actually did. So I got all seven books at a great price and actually felt bad afterwards because I paid for the books and then $3.50 for shipping. He mailed these to me in a medium flat rate box. That is not $3.50 shipping. A medium flat rate box is $15 and some change. So by my math, he came out losing <laughs> because the purchase price and the shipping that I paid didn't come close to any, anywhere near to $15.50. So I felt really bad after receiving the package because he really took a hit on this, but I don't know. I mean, he accepted the offer, but I still felt really bad. Um, that being said, I'm going to share with you the books. They are not vintage or old, but they are just fun. And as it turns out, of the seven books, two of them are actually not um, <clears throat> paper doll books, but more like fashion books, which I'm okay with because you can totally fussy cut um, these out. So the first book is Everyday Dress of Rural America, 1783 to 1800s, with instructions and patterns. So I thought that was pretty good. The illustrations are nice. Could always fussy cut them and use color pencils to color them in or just use them as is. But it's kind of cool that they come with patterns. Not that I would, you know, create an entire wardrobe of this style of clothing for me, but <laughs> how beautiful are these images? And they are tall images. I was looking for tall images oversized images to put in my book and this publication is 1992 so not that old at all and then this one is another book that was more about fashion and not paper dolls this is Russell's Standard Fashions 1915 to 1990 1919 and this is a 19 96 print of this book and it has great illustrations along these lines so can't be mad especially consider what I paid <laughs> and it's a fun book and again these these types of images are something that you can easily colorize with color pencils Oh, I can even use my embossing glaze, my Tim Holtz embossing glaze. This might be a great opportunity to use more of those glazes considering I have so many of them. 
So those were the two books about fashion. The actual paper doll books are great. This one is called Antique Fashion Paper Dolls of the 1890s. This is 1984. Love this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out all of the clothing. And then what I will do in terms of the dolls themselves, I am going to scan them so I have a a forever copy of it on my um, computer on my drive and I can print them anytime I want to use one of these dresses in one of my projects or I just can I can um, think of other ways to create heads for these dolls <laughs> but it is nice heavyweight paper and I love that the clothing is not so intricate that it's going to give me a tough time um, with the fussy cutting. So I love that. And then there was the Victorian Debutante Paper Doll Book. This one is by Brenda Senneth Mattox. And this is a 1997 print. Now the paper doll, the, the doll itself is on heavyweight paper and the dresses are on a much lighter weight paper. But the, the dresses are stunning, beautiful. This might be one of my favorite books. Simply because of the size of the, the doll and the clothing. Isn't this gorgeous? I have quite a few other paper books, paper doll books coming my way. I also found them on eBay. They are vintage. The ones that I ordered from a different seller are vintage. So I paid a little more for those. Um, but even so, they were uh, reasonably priced. Aren't those gorgeous? And then this one, Spanish Girl and Boy Paper Dolls. This is 1993. Absolutely adorable. Smaller size. So something like this would be good in my smaller journals or for smaller projects. And it's that lightweight paper. For the clothing, but the dolls themselves are on a heavier cardstock. Cute. Here we have Victorian fashion paper doll dolls from Harper's Bazaar, 1867 to 1898 by Theodore Menton. So here we have Abigail and her clothing. And this is nice thick cardstock, so that's great. More clothing for Abigail. Abigail has quite the wardrobe. We have Beatrice, lovely Beatrice. More clothing for Beatrice. Very impressive little closet there as well. Coraline or Caroline. Depends. I say Coraline. You might say Caroline. Tomato, tomatoes, potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> there we go. Lovely wardrobe as well. Look at that. Fancy. Ooh, this is gorgeous. And then we have Daphne. 
Every time I hear the name Daphne, I think Scooby-Doo. <laughs> says more about me and what generation I grew up in. <laughs> Beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then I have Antique Paper Dolls, 1915 to 1920, edited by Arnold Arnold. Hey, the name's so nice, he used it twice. This is Well, the first edition was published in 1975, but I don't think this is a 1975 publication. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Jane. But where's Jane herself? She's probably in the back. Okay, so we're looking at Jane's wardrobe. And Mary's wardrobe. And this is thinner paper. I can always glue this onto heavier cardstock. I'm going to try to run these through my scanning cut and see what happens. Here are the paper dolls. These are a heavier weight cardstock. If my my brother's scanning cut is able to pick up these lines and do the cutting for me, ah, uh, that would be awesome but as i've said in the past my scanning cut and i we have a love-hate relationship <laughs> Ooh, nice oh that's pretty so lots and lots of lots of material for me to work with here. This was in the book. Monterey County Historical Society. Salinas, California. I wonder if that's where all of these books were purchased from at some point. Hmm, that's some fun ephemera for one of my books. Then I have Everyday Dresses of Rural America. 1983 to 1800s with instructions and patterns. Did no, we looked at this one. Okay, I was like, wait, 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 deja vu. Okay, so those are all of those books. My share from eBay and my share from some vintage thrifting. Thank you so, so much for watching, my friends. I truly do appreciate it. And I want to thank those who took the time to watch my last video upload. I know it was a little different. Um, I shared with you in kind of vlog style a day of me in my garden. And I appreciate those who took the time to watch the video. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. It really uh, did mean the world to me. And it does. Um, moving forward, what I think I'm going to do... Um, in terms, I was thinking about this in terms of, um, giveaways and I have, uh, quite a few things in my craft room that I want to do giveaways for. What I'm going to do moving forward is I am just going to pick one of my videos and pick one of the people who took the time to leave a comment in that video. Moving forward, that's how I'm going to pick uh, winners for any of my giveaways. I've given it some thought and decided that that really is the best way to um, make sure that the people who win these prizes are people who actually watch my videos and who um, take time out of their schedule, busy schedule, busy lives to leave comments. That's my way the only way I can think of to ensure that the prices go to people who are genuinely subscribed to my channel. I'm finding what's been happening with my giveaways is, you know, people subscribe and then after the giveaway, they unsubscribe, which is cool. Don't want to stay. Don't have to stay. Bye bye. There's the door. Um, but I think 
to make sure that the people who get these prizes are subscribers who have been extremely supportive and been with me for you know a long long time or even newer subscribers but who actually take the time to watch the video and leave comments I am going to just start picking winners from comment sections in my videos I'll never announce which video I'm just going to pick one and then I will come on post a video and um, move forward from there so that's my solution with um, uh, giveaways because I do have as I said some items here that I want to do a giveaway for and the only reason I haven't done the giveaways because I couldn't figure out how to do it such that the people who actually won the giveaways or the people who had a chance to win uh, were people who were actually subscribed because they want to be here and not those who just subscribe for the sake of winning a prize so Hope that didn't come across as being a little too salty or sassy but that's how I feel about it whether it's salty or sassy that's how I feel so for those who take the time to watch my videos thank you so so much I appreciate you for those who leave comments I appreciate you um, for those who just watch and don't leave comments, I appreciate you too. I understand. We don't always have something to say. Um, but I appreciate the views. I appreciate the thumbs up. And I appreciate the comments. And I appreciate that you're subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. I will catch you all in the video. Next video. <laughs> Until next time. Bye bye.